As I've mentioned in other posts, while I think link has its uses, I still favor the object data source control in conjunction with data sets and a three-tier architecture. Since any future demos I do will probably involve this architecture, I thought it would be useful to do a short demo that demonstrates how to create a three-tiered architecture in ASP.NET and specifically under Visual Studio 2008. Well, the first thing we're going to need to do here is create a data set. And this is uh, really going to do most of our data access for us. So let's go add a new item data set and we're going to call this data set sample. Now I, I prefixed the data set class uh, class that I use with data set and then uh, typically the table name that I'm going to put in it. So data set sample or uh, if I'm going to put a group of table names in it then I'll put uh, something that represents the group. Um, you'll find that when you're doing uh, an architecture like this uh, if you put all you know 100 tables in one data set it's going to get really unwieldy and, and very difficult to manage. Uh, so if you're going to put multiples in there, you know, put groups of them together, but don't put your whole uh, database schema in one designer. It's, it's not going to work well for you. We're going to go over here to Tools, uh, sorry, to the, uh, the Server Explorer, and we're going to grab the address table and drop it in here. This is the same address table that I've been working with uh, for all the other demos that we've been working with here. Uh, now, one of the differences between 2005 and 2008 uh, Visual Studio versions is that uh, in 2005 it brought up a configuration wizard. Uh, in 2008 it doesn't bring up that wizard anymore, it drops all the defaults on the screen. So what we want to do is we want to go in here and configure this. We need to make a few changes. Um, one of the things that we're doing here is we went ahead and, and just used the select statement that it gave us. Um, we could actually delete that uh, adapter and start over again and, and use start procedures. We're not going to do that, but what we are going to do is I never use the fill method. Uh, I use the get data method to get uh, to return back the, uh, the data table object that I'm dealing with. So we're going to do that, and we're also going to leave this checkbox here so it creates the uh, insert update delete uh, methods for us directly. We're not going to use them in this demo, but I'm going to keep them there uh, for a future demo finish that. So it gives us our get data. And that is the data access layer. That's all we got to do. Uh, this is going to take care of uh, properties and methods for us. This is going to take care of getting our data. And uh, that's really all there is to it. We're going to go create now our business logic layer. And you can do one or two things. Um, this is a short demo here. Uh, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll create uh, a directory for my data sets and another directory for my business logic layer. Um, I'm just going to put both of the files in the same directory for this short little demo here. So add a new item and we're going to create a class and we'll just call this, um, prefix it with DLL for business logic layer and we'll call it sample. Since that's all we really need here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create an adapter property. Now it's not going to make a whole lot of difference for this demo, but because we're only going to go after one method, but I want to put things in place so that when I go and add my insert methods and my update methods and my delete methods or whatever, um, my adapter is already basically created for me and I don't have to do that work anymore. So we're going to go, um, the adapter is going to be a, a private property and we're going to Type it with the data set, table adapters, address table adapter, and we're going to call the property adapter. This is going to be a read-only property, so we're just going to put the get in here. Now we're going to, in this case, we're going to just go ahead and return a new instance of that object. Um, one of the things that I've done before, and I can show you in another demo, is uh, I've actually uh, created the adapter and changed the connection string, and that's really useful for things like Survey and Oxley, where each user that logs in uh, that's going to be modifying the data needs to have a separate login ID. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create our get data method. And for this, we're going to do data set 
sample, and then we're gonna go address data table and get data. Now this is again a very simple demo, um, and again now that we've got this controller or this uh, middle layer business layer class, uh, a lot of things that we can do in here is we can munge the data before we send it back. We can filter it uh, because this is uh, 2008 and we've got a link available to us. We could uh, provide a link statement in here instead of the uh, straight get data. Uh, a lot of things that we can do uh, because we've got this intermediate layer now. Last piece, go up here to our default page and we're going to get our data grid. And we're going to create an object data source. Again, we're going to call it object data source sample. And you'll see that the way it's set up now is going after the table adapter directly. We don't want to do that. We want to go after, I'm checking that box, we're going to go after this business logic layer sample. And we're going to choose the get data method. And if we had an update and insert and delete method, we could do that there. But this is all we really need right now. We're going to enable paging. And then we're going to go over to our properties here. And we're going to page size to five, and we're going to set the paging settings, mode to next previous first last, and let's see if we can do anything with the styles here, not much. We're just going to leave that alone. Obviously, we could center this if we wanted to, but we're not going to bother with any of that right now. And now we can run this. And there we have our page data grid using a three tiered architecture.